Hi everybody, I'm Joey. And I'm Alex. And today we're looking at a building game. Ooh, yeah. Here it Jenga. is. Jenga. <laughs> That's it. Ta-da! Yeah. Rolling Heights. Yep. So Hang this on. is... Try to get it straight. There we go. Can you do it? Yeah. I got it. Nailed it. Is that straight to you? You got straight? <laughs> well, I meant like this. Like this. Yeah. Is that straight? <laughs> no, I still yep. have it. <laughs> she hangs pictures in her house. There we go. I think that. I know. They all look like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyway, yeah. all right. So Rolling Heights. <laughs> so this is by John DeClaire. Mm -hmm. And talk about great pedigree. Mm -hmm. He's got so many great games. AEG too. Pretty yep. AEG as well. Mm -hmm. So um, all right, before we go into it, here is exactly how it's played. Okay. Okay. So we are set up for a game of Rolling Heights. So Rolling Heights, you get to make buildings. Now this is not a full rules explanation. This is a very quick overview just to kind of give you an idea of how the game is played. Pretty much you're going to make buildings on these place building plans first and then start to build the buildings using cubes going up and once they're finished you're going to get victory points. So to begin the game everyone's going to get two targets and both of these are going to be in-game scoring. You're going to keep both of them but then you get to score one at the end of the game. And you're also going to get these caps. These caps will denote which areas are yours, which building plans and which finished buildings are there. Then you're also going to get these meeples. This is the fun part of the game. So first thing first, you're going to go ahead and grab a building plan from anywhere over here and you're going to place it. Now placing them, you're going to see certain ones have cubes. So if I were to grab, say this one right here, if I were to grab this guy, he's got a home area here. So if I can match that up with something, I will get those victory points. For example, if I place him here, this has a one and a home, I will get one victory point. I couldn't put it here because this costs, costs three cubes to put here, one or two. So I could put him here. So let's say I do that, place him. Now again, take a look. This building plan is going to take one brown, then three browns, then two browns. But if I finish it, I get three victory points and I get a blue or a white meeple. So I'm going to go ahead and place him right here and I'm going to go ahead and score my one victory point. Then everyone else is going to go ahead and do theirs, place their building plans out and you're going to refill the area here. So what is going to happen now? Now you're going to get to the part of the phase. There are four phases in this, prep, risk, main and cleanup. So prep, you're going to roll your meeples. This is the fun part. You take the meeples and you roll them in the box. And how they stand, oh, that wasn't a very good one. No one's standing up there. There we go. How they stand really depends on where, how hard they're working. So there are a couple ways a meeple could stand. One way, he could be lying flat. In that situation, you get to re-roll him. Or he could be standing like this, like this like this, any of that he's considered working. But if he's standing straight up like this, he's considered working hard. So for example, this meeple here gets you nothing. If he's just standing, he's going to get you one gray cube. And if he's standing up working hard, he's going to get you two gray cubes. So you're going to keep rolling until half of your meeples are either standing, either working or working hard. So we're going to take this guy out. I've got three, re-roll. There we go. So this guy is working and this guy is working as well. So you have got one guy that's still lying flat. At this point, I can press my luck. If I want to reroll this guy, oh, there we go, he's standing, so I then get to add him to the workforce. However, if he was lying down, I would lose half of my workers rounded down. And then I would also get one of these cubes right here it is a wild resource or a victory point at the end. But that's a way to push your luck and to push however you want to go. But say I decided to stop right here. I've got everybody there is working. No one's working really hard. That's going to get me two brown and one gray cube. Now I'm going to use those to buy a different building plan over here. So let's say I like, hmm, I like this one right here. This guy right here, this takes two gray, two gray, and if I get it, I get three victory points and I get a blue or a white meeple, which we'll go into those in a moment. So where can I place this? I can play this, place this orthogonally anywhere I want to for free, or I can go out of space, but for every space I go out, it costs me a cube. Because I'm paying a cube, that's the cost of this one since he was here, I'm paying a cube 
to get this. So I want to go ahead and I also want to place him somewhere where I'll get this benefit. So right here I see I get two victory points if he's placed there. So there we go. I then move up two and now I've got these two extra cubes. So I'm going to place one here and I'm going to place the other brown one right here. Now because this takes one, three, and two, and this takes two and two, none of these are finished. So if they were, oh, one thing I did forget to do is once you place a building plan, you are going to put your caps on it to denote that is your building plan. And when it's done, you're going to cap it, and then you're going to score these victory points. Now right now, I obviously haven't done anything. So you're going to keep going like that, then at the end of your turn, you're going to lose any unspent cubes, and then you're going to let the next person go and take your meeples and reroll and prepare for your next turn. So that way when it comes around to you, they're not waiting for you. Let's go over these meeples over here real quick. These meeples are going to do something very similar because these blue ones are going to get you blue cubes. The clear ones are going to get you clear cubes. The other ones have different abilities depending on their color, like the politicians gain you money, the peoples do different things. So that is all denoted up here in the player aid. Then at the end, the end game, how is that scored? The end game actually is activated, but one of these cubes runs out. Then the end game begins. You're going to finish that round and complete one more round. Now, if you run out of brown cubes, you can still use brown cubes. You'll just use these as a replacement until the end of the game, but you know you're towards the end. Then at the end, you're going to then count up all the victory points from your targets, any victory points you have over here, and also these three objectives that were for the whole game. You're going to add up those, so you add up all the victory points, and whoever has the most victory points wins. So that is pretty much, in a nutshell, how you play Rolling Heights. So now let's send it back and see what we thought about it. But seriously, best part, rolling these meeples. Check this out. That's fantastic. That's great. Okay, so that is pretty much how it's played. And again, like I said, it's a, it's a quick overview, not yeah. all the rules. It's a lot more to it than that. Yeah. So this was a game I was not expecting much out of it mm -mm. because um, we have played recently Shake That City mm -hmm. and a couple of the games like that. And I thought, okay, you know what? We're, we'll try this. Seems kind of gimmicky with the Lego style cubes, which aren't really Lego style, no, but no. they stack up there. Yeah. But um, what, what were your initial thoughts on this? My initial, <laughs> so my, the first thing I want to mention before we go too far is the lack of player aid. Yes, I was going to mention that later. Okay. But it is... Because <sighs> I feel like the things I want to say later on refer back to the lack of player aid. So I thought let's just bring it out forward first. You know what? Let's address that. Yes. It's silly <laughs> at this point to not okay. have player aids. Mm. I mean, it is annoying. Yeah. Because here's the thing. We just played a 10-year, whatever, 10-year-old game yeah. that had player aids like that same night. Yes. And you're like, here's your player. Here's what the icon means at the bottom of the card. Mm -hmm. And for this one, they decided to put it at one area on, on the board. Yeah. Great, if you're near that area. But the people on the other side were like, okay, what is it? They were taking photos. Taking photos yeah, with their yeah. camera. And being like, I was okay. upside down to it, so I'm having to read upside down the whole yeah, time. Yeah, it's like, yeah. okay, what, yeah. is, what does the pink meeple do? Okay, what is, okay, let me zoom mm. in here. And you know what? You can go to BGG, probably, I don't know if it's on there, and there will be yeah. a file to print for you to have a player aid and give it to everybody. Mm -hmm. You can do that. You can go around, but you know what also could happen? <laughs> you could print for player aids. That would be yeah. sorry. I'm going to step off my soapbox as far <laughs> as that goes. But that is honestly that is uh, that is annoying. Incredible. I was going to say this game looks amazing, and what I liked is as we're playing this game, right? I at different stages, people are getting their phones out, taking pictures. They're like, oh, this looks good. Oh, this looks good. It looks amazing. It plays so, good. so well. I love this. And one thing I was going to say is that I felt myself personally, I there was so much strategy to this game, right? Right. So because the fact that you cannot let your... your building blocks, whatever you want to call them, right? Carry on to your next turn. You have to use in that round, right? So I would come to my, my buying phase and I'm like, this is what I've got, but this is what I want to build, but I can't build all of this. What am I going to buy? The lack of play rate would get so frustrating because I was like, hang on, um, what would that give me? No, hang on, where's the rule book again? This would, I would get a little bit of AP just because I wouldn't, I'd have to figure out all the things because there was no easy reference there for me. Right. So, but this game had so much strategy. 
And you know what? It is yeah. so fun to mm -hmm. roll those meeples. And it's pretty I funny. I um, love that. I wrote here, mm -hmm. love the meeples. And Otto yes. Craig put, love the needles. <laughs> they're not needles. No, they're not. No. But you roll those meeples and the way they yeah. land, I mean, it's so, it's it's incredible. It's, it's so unique. Like it is. I, when we first were like, we're rolling meeples and we're all like kind of plinging them into our boxes. Like, how do we do this? And then we're like, oh, this is fun. Like, it was really, really it good. Is, yes. It is a blast. Yes. I mean, we just had yeah. so much fun rolling them. And then yeah. you push your luck. Mm -hmm. it, it is the only game that I think almost rivaled Quacks. Yes. In the fact that I mm -hmm. wanted to push my luck and the, the texture. Because Quacks, you know, you have to upgrade those components for it to feel like yeah. an actual game. Yeah. You right. just do. Mm -hmm. But this one comes with those components. I know. And, right out of the box. And then yes. their components are so well thought out. Like, mm -hmm. they thought about it far more with their R&D than mm -hmm. I did because at first you're stacking those buildings mm -hmm. and you're like man you know it'd be nice if these actually put together more because they loosely go together yeah. so if they fall over they kind of all kind of psh, disperse yeah. <laughs> but then when I put them back into the box yeah I was like this is why they didn't genius because otherwise mm. I'd be having to pull each one apart like that so now they're pretty much just saying guys just be an adult don't knock it over yeah be you know but mm -hmm. it's because they go together so you just take that you drop yeah. it in, into the pile and they get put together so these components look so good yes. the meeples aren't normal meeples they're no. soft they're rounded they put so much thought into the r d of this mm. and it's such a fun game i mean even it's hard to get people when you're explaining how to play it. We've had a couple of different different gaming groups we played it with. And uh -huh. we're like, guys, stop rolling the meeples so you'll hear how to do it. One thing they did not have is... Um, they, no. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> but um, the first player token is important because yeah. later that way you know how to continue the rounds. Uh -huh. But a current player token. Because I like the fact this is kind of simultaneous play. Yes. Because it's not really one player is taking their turn, but after your turn is over, you then start to roll your meeples mm -hmm. and you start to go ahead and do the dividing thing, go forward. So by the time it comes around to you again, then you have everything rolled because that's the only thing that takes time. I was going to say. You roll and you start moving. One now. of the things I, I liked how they saw that dead time kind of problem. Yeah, right? they eliminated they, that. They, there is no dead time. This game is constantly moving. I And I did really like how they did it. That was great. But you're but, at a current player token would be really handy because there are a few times where you're thinking you're waiting for that person, but they've been done and it should have been your turn like a few minutes ago and you're like, oh, whoops, sorry. I, one thing I liked too is I liked how the bigger, bigger cities, you have that dilemma. Do you build them? and take a chance that you're going to complete them and get more victory points or do you do more of the smaller cities and get more points as the game is going on there's a lot of dilemmas there but that comes back to that strategy that they had just done so well oh mm. it's so much strategy yeah. with it and another thing is it is one of those that a couple of games give you this feeling, right? Mm -hmm. When you start off with a clean board mm -hmm. and then at the end you've just got this skyline yeah. built and I'm like that is wow it just looks so good it on the table. It looks incredible. It looks incredible. It's mm -hmm. so fun because you start off with those four workers at the beginning, then you end up with 12 workers. You have to choose which workers you put out yeah. there because you only have 10. Mm -hmm. I don't think I mentioned that in the um, playthrough. Yeah. But you are limited at 10. You can roll at a time. But um, so at the end, it's interesting to see all these phones come out and take a picture because you've created that city. Yeah. That it's it all looks good and you're proud of where you put your buildings and mm -hmm. then you're like, oh, I'm next to you, but I'm blocked. And I mean, there's so much that works so well yeah. in this game. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So um, anyway, so mm -hmm. we're going to go to our number now. Okay. And um, so obviously we do love this game. This game is a great game. And mm -hmm. what would you give it? I'd give it an eight. I would give it an eight as well. Mm. And in your mind, was it the fact that they just did not care enough to put in player <laughs> Correct. I did. Yes. I, I would have given it higher. But there was halfway there was so frustrating. Phones are out, multi phones were sending stuff to each other, trying to help the yeah. It is. I mean yes. and and mm -hmm. eventually if we play this game a lot we're going to go over there and I know this sounds petty. We're going to go yeah. over there and we're going to print yeah. some more player aids and put them in the box. And maybe Correct. laminate them or something mm -hmm. since we're going to do that. Um, but the other night yeah. we were taking screenshots and emailing <laughs> yeah. them and texting with each other and just the fact that you have yeah. to do that 
It's annoying. Yeah, you know? brand new game. And the mm -hmm. fact that it's such a beautiful game. It's amazing. You know, it's yes. just so, if you do, so I do recommend trying this game. Absolutely. You know, because mm -hmm. this is an incredibly built game. Yeah. And I, I really, I don't use the word love, I do love this game. Oh, absolutely. This it one is, is I, I'm excited to introduce this game to people. Right. Yeah, and I hope I've shared how much I really enjoyed this game. This is a fantastic game. If you see us at a con this year, this is a game I'd want to play. So yeah. find out. We're actually going to play another game game night in about an hour yeah so, so yeah with right the, um this is a great great game so, so anyway um yeah. this is highly recommended uh -huh. by us mm -hmm. um and this is one that we would have overlooked if yeah. it didn't hit our table mm. and we're glad it did me too because this is a home run absolutely the, by mm. ag and john declare which is used to home runs yep and um, i still haven't got it straight have i <laughs> No, I'm you trying, not. I'm trying you're so not. hard. You know what would help you to get it straight? <laughs> a play rate? A play rate. Hey! How to hang things straight. <laughs> so, okay, anyway. All right, um, thanks, guys. Bye. All right, bye.